let it go. Let's see if I put the face in the front of the first time we're pregnant. Um, for next time we're going to cover, we're going to cover condition one care. Uh, condition one is more important than the magazine started, chain and loaded, take the arm of apple for it. Uh, yeah, you have the M16, that means you also shut your dust together. Uh, anyway, it's uh, what my granddaddy calls shoot ready. Okay, it's ready to shoot. That's how I carry, that's how most people carry, that's how you should carry unless you're not carrying in a holster in some waistband uh, because it's too easy. You can just need to knock a man and take you off and bolt yourself. Okay? You're carrying a holster that doesn't cover the shirt guard and you want to get a better holster. Uh, if you can't get a better holster yet, or you're here you can't get a better holster at all, use the easy draw that I'm talking about. Quite simple. Okay? The primary advantages of conditional repair on the one, you have that extra round on the back. I'm carrying Glock 17 right now. If it is clear, you can go ahead and confirm that because I'm probably going to drop for a long finger bang mag one, two, finger bang mag one again in the chamber. Get a visual. Slide goes home in the empty chamber. Looking for an empty chamber, not looking for brass. Okay? Anytime I'm doing stuff with a live weapon, I'm going to clear it out. I'm going to start seeing a lot more of that. Okay? That, that's a good safety net. I'm going to cover the Israeli dry fire routine later, and I'm going to show you how you can do that with. Uh, you know, carrying around the chamber as well. Obviously, we're not around the chamber. It's kind of dry fire. But and, anyway, that's a later video. Uh, but you will see that process again several times in the videos I'll put up today. Primary advantages are game one more round on tap. That's, that's the first one, obvious. Uh, you know, I carry a Glock 17. I got 17 bullets in my magazine when I carry them. Uh, you know, I have a few with plus two base plates. I got one with an Aragonda plus five, or plus six, or and I put it off my own. And I've got a couple 33 on half the stick. You know, when you got double stack magazines, one round doesn't sound like much. It's a 5% gain in the case of the lot. Right? Uh, if I've got the plus two base plates on, that, that's literally 5%. 20 rounds is 20 times. I'm going to go back to the top. 5% of the If you carry a gun like a 1911, only mag's worth a damn for a 1911 or a Wilson. Either the 8 or the 10 rounds. Some of them say. But if you use an 8 round magazine, you go from 8. To nine. 10 out of 10 11, 7 out of 7 8. The number of those significant. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. The number of percentage wise is significantly higher. Excuse me for y'all, I just kind of stuck up on it. But anyway, that percentage goes way up with the left go around here. Yeah. Compared to something like a pocket rocket LCT, you know, going from 6 to 7 is, is a big increase. Uh, something like the, the SIG 290 or a pocket rocket. Uh, the, the, that extra round might save your eyes. And when you know when you're down, that extra round might save your eyes. My primary thing is, and I'm going to switch to a left handed position, with an Israeli draw, I have to be this far away. Like my mother was touching this bag. Well, uh, not quite. It's going to start shooting. Okay? So around the chamber, I can draw and start giving this bag help from here. Now I'm doing some bags. Head bunnies, you know, angry muzzles, knee straps, tie elbows. Okay? And I can actually give this bag all at once at the same time. Okay? That's my biggest reason for carrying around the chain. Okay? The methodology of that came about, well, in the 1870s with the old revolvers, single action, with a fixed fire pin or a cap ball. You couldn't carry all six chambers loaded. You drop the gun, gun go bang. Okay? Matter of fact, my great grandpa until his dying day carried carried a old hog leg Colt, uh, 4440, single action, five and a half inch barrel. And he loaded one, skipped one, and loaded four. Okay? So he pulled that gun in and cocked the hammer. Well, with the advent of leather revolvers with transfer bars and stuff like that, when you're getting into the double action revolver area in the early 1900s, all of a sudden, now you can just pull that gun out, bang, 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 bang. Someone, I don't know, I have no idea who, figured out maybe at 1911 you can rack the slide, pop that bad boy on safe, holster up. Yeah. Hey, the military still talked to Mission 3 draw during World War II, so I'm imagining it was like Dillinger. I'm just certain I'm kidding. Probably, uh, <laughs> probably some mafioso, I don't know. Someone figured out you can carry that gun on safe. Okay. And it's just as safe as anything else. What we're going to take, I'll say, oh, wait a minute. I went from seven rounds to eight. That's like, I could carry the six shot 38 or carry eight shot 45. You know, personally, 
the caliber argument to me, uh, I've said this a lot, it, it's like measuring dicks without a ruler, okay? No one really wins until, until you get concrete proof. The only concrete proof as to which one's more effective is to let somebody shoot you with it. I'm not volunteering for that. 38 has a lot of bodies on it, 45 has a lot of bodies on it, for that matter, 42 has a lot of bodies on it. I can care less about the caliber argument. But someone figured out eight bullets better than six. Seven bullets better than six. But for that six, I can flip it out and go straight to get. There's an advantage right there. Is that worth one round? Probably to some people. Um, someone figured out, wait a minute, I can just go pull it out. Now I got two shots. 33% more capacity. See where I'm getting at there? That round in the chamber gave that 1911 the edge of the revolver. You get that, the, the one or nine years. Okay? Why didn't a lot of police departments want to go to the, the 1911? Because they were used to, you know, their dad and their grandpa with single action revolvers, those that were gun guys, you know, way back when, and you couldn't carry a single action revolver cock. They saw that cock camera, and some administrators still do. If you don't believe me, look at departments that authorize the 1911, but require the cock and lock camera to be covered up and not visible. There are a few. Okay? We all know there's a few. Alright, again. I'm not a 1911 fan, but it's not a bad gun. It's perfectly suitable for police service for, for most people. I mean, I think you should have more bullets, but that's my biggest issue with the 1911 is capacity. I don't want to put that out there. Which makes sense for what we're talking about is capacity. Okay, that one extra bullet, you know, if one extra becomes you know, seven extra. But anyway, you've got, you've got one more round, but they, they saw that hammer back for having a round in the chamber. And they said it was a no-no. So a double action pistol started to get popular. And a double action revolver, or, wow, I just said that. I hope you carried a revolver with a round in the chamber, or a few rounds in the chamber, or something. Wow, a tactical instructor just had a fucking mind part. Anyway, you can carry a double action pistol with a round in the chamber, and nobody's alive. Right? You carry a SIG, a Beretta, a uh, third gen Smith, first, second gen Smith, and you can carry a double action round and hammer it down. Whoa! I can pull it out like a double action revolver. I don't have to carry it on safe. Person, I believe the gun has manual safety. Is two times you should ever use manual safety. All right. When the wind should control the weapon to the holster and or the sling, and when long term storage comes about. All right. If, you're if there's no trouble expected whatsoever, you shouldn't have it on safe. If you're a police officer carrying a duty holster, I understand the health protection factor, but at the same time, double action revolvers never have a safety. Locks don't have a safety. Most MPs don't have a safety. Not exactly. Now, some guns like well, the PPK, such as Smith and Wesson earlier, all those, it's not drop safe without it. Yeah, by all means, those have to be carried on safe. But anyway, you don't have to. You can carry it, and it's in the same condition right into the old VA revolver, just with obviously more bullets. Plus, that round in the chamber, now you have the same speed. The other best option for round in the chamber, besides the weapon retention factor that I just said on here, and obviously the uh, the dang capacity issue is when you're racking that gun, there's a lot that can go wrong. Okay? I sweat, I sweat horrendously. Uh, matter of fact, there are sweat holes all over the floor in the shop to be working out. And I just sweat, no, not really standing holes, but staying on the concrete from where it's been wet. Matter of fact, there's a big one right here below my feet from uh, yesterday. But anyway, you might not have time to draw a cock and shoot. Most likely you won't because most gunfights happen in a close range environment. Uh, extremely close, less than 10 feet. Mostly less than 8 feet. Uh, combat distance, oh, combat distance, I hope it's combat distance because it's in the real shooting people. Contact distance, combat is range, okay? As in two or three steps plus an arm's length, okay? Uh, basically, the difference is for me to the camera, which is exactly one. Two, three normal steps and less than arm's length. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, three normal steps. I'm like in this box behind me that I've been leaning on being lazy. But anyway, with that round in the chamber, you don't have to take time to rack the slide. You don't have to worry about your hands sweating and missing it. Um, you know, I, I think it's just an all around better way to carry. Plus, when you're carrying around a gun that's not half loaded, that's actually fully loaded. You are required to act like you're carrying a uh, gun. It's amazing what that round of the chamber will do to change people's mindset when it comes to that. I've seen people, hell, I've done it. Seen, and seen other people who will handle and unload a gun 
horrendously different than they ever had all over them. Okay, that's, you know, everybody's got it. Anybody who says they have none of them lied to you because they knew they'd done the lies, they'd unloaded and they'd done something, you know, they'd never do the money back. Case in point, you look, as Gabe Suarez put it here in the state, it's like the blue gun, the red gun, the green gun, the purple gun, but you go down to South America, there ain't no red gun down there, there ain't no blue gun down there. You clear out what you got and take it over, and now you're pointing a live gun at somebody that you're doing force on force training with. Not so much force on force, but maybe disarming or whatever. I've done that. You know, I've done that, but at the same time, that gun was meticulously cleared out. The action of Magla was taken over to make certain that nothing got in there. But, you know, again, would you do that with a loaded gun? No, you wouldn't. Uh, at least I hope you wouldn't. You do it with one of my classes. I'll, I'll be honest, I'll probably shoot at you. <laughs> it's just, especially if you point a, a loaded gun at me. Uh, but anyway... You know, you, you, people do things differently when those around your chamber. It keeps you more safe, it keeps you on. Uh, it's a little bit faster, obviously more capacity, plus you can use it in the contact of a little bit easier. Uh, a lot of bit easier. Uh, less likely for stuff to go wrong. The Israeli draw has its place, but that place, I don't believe, is ever going to get it. Because they brought the stand the fight.